In 1895, a critical connection was made across the Mississippi River. A 1,666-foot bridge connected the cities of St. Paul Park and Newport on the east to Invergrove Heights and South St. Paul to the west. The bridge had two decks. The lower deck initially served horse and buggy traffic and would later serve automobile traffic. The upper deck was built for rail traffic and was bought by the Rock Island Railroad in 1904. But what made this bridge so unique was the 400-foot rotating swing section that would allow barges and boats to access the rest of the river channel. At the time it was built, it was the longest swing span bridge in the world. Nicknamed the Rock Island Swing Bridge, the historic bridge was a crucial connection for farmers in the East Metro and Western Wisconsin to the South St. Paul Stockyards. In later years, it served commuters between the two sides of the Mississippi. The Rock Island Railroad operated the bridge until 1980, when the company went bankrupt. The bridge continued operating for highway traffic only until 1999, when a section of the bridge was deemed unsafe. In 2008, a portion of the bridge collapsed on the east bank of the river. Time and deterioration, it seemed, would end the storied history of the Old Swing Bridge. Ted Knack worked for the City of St. Paul Park Public Works from 1974 to 1994. He still lives in St. Paul Park with his wife. 35 miles away in Ellsworth, Wisconsin, Ted stores an antique steam traction engine. This is a Case 80 horse steam engine. I required it in uh, 1993 in Fairmont, Minnesota. The engine originally came from a mile over here. And through the years, it, it changed hands, and then I ended up buying it, and I brought it back here. Ted's case engine is dusted off once a year from storage to be used in an old-fashioned sawmill. We bring the logs down, and then the logs go on the mill, and then we belt the steam engine up to the mill, and then uh, the engine runs the mill, and the saw cuts the logs. So what does an old steam engine have in common with the historic swing bridge? Attached to the case engine is a whistle that was once used on the old swing bridge. It was on the railroad bridge in St. Paul Park when they built the bridge. They had a boiler on there and they used the whistle on their bridge to notify the boats whether they would open up or not. When a boat was coming upriver or downriver, uh, and he wanted the uh, bridge open, he would whistle a long blast of his whistle to notify the bridge tender that he was coming. Then the bridge tender would open the bridge, and when the bridge was open, then he, the bridge tender would blow this whistle a long blast to notify the boat he could come through. If the bridge couldn't open up, then the bridge tender would blow four short blasts and that would notify the, the boat that he couldn't open up. With the advent of radio technology, the boiler and whistle were removed from the bridge in the 1920s. Ted bought the whistle from a former bridge tender for $200. And he was getting to the point where he was older and he knew he wasn't going to be around for a long time, so he decided to sell it and so I bought it. Ted's love of history and his memories of the bridge encouraged him to buy the old brass whistle in the 1990s. When I was young, we used to bicycle across that bridge. In them days, the trucks used to come across that bridge that were traveling on Highway 100, and they'd get stuck in the middle because in the middle, the bridge was just a hair lower than the rest. And they'd go along, and when they'd get to that area, they'd hit the bridge, and then they'd sit there, and what they'd do is they'd let the air out of the tires on the truck to get it down so they could get across the bridge. Today, one original section of the old bridge still stands as a fishing pier in Invergrove Heights. However, thanks to Ted Knack, part of the bridge still echoes through the farmlands of Wisconsin. It was history, part of it. You know, that's why I really wanted it.